These are the tools you can use to edit your images in Capture One. Welcome to the Visual Center, I'm Trent. In my last videos, I showed you the basic layout of Capture One. In this video, let's go over some of the tool tabs and tools we can use to edit our images. All right, the first tools tab we have is the library tab or this folder icon here in the top left corner. This is where we're going to access different image management and filters. So if I'm trying to locate a different image in my catalog, I'm gonna use this library tool to navigate to that image. If I select my hard drive, go down to pictures, raw images, and then you can see I can go here and select the different folders where these images are located. Now below that we have the filters tool. Filters are one of the great things about Capture One. I have a myriad of filters I can choose to use to filter my images. If I select the plus icon here in the tool, I can actually select and add different filters into this filters tool. So let's say if I added IPTC data for every city I took a picture in, I could actually filter based off that and select IPTC image city. And you could see, if I scroll down here at the bottom, now I sadly haven't added cities to my images, to these specific images, but I could filter based off of the name of each city where each image was captured. All right, the next tab is going to be the camera tab. This is where we're gonna control the tethering options or tethering tools for Capture One. Now, Capture One is great at tethering. It's one of the reasons why I love the software. Now, we're not gonna go over many of these tools now in this video, but be sure to subscribe for a future video all about tethering. All right, the next tab we have is the lens tab. It's this circle icon of the third one. Here we can find tools to help correct issues arising from the lens we used when we created the photo and along with helpful cropping tools. So if I select my cropping cursor up here, highlight the image, you can see I have a pink overlay of the Fibonacci spiral on my image. If I actually go over to grid and drop that down, you can see the type is Fibonacci spiral. I can also select golden ratio or rectangular and then I can actually adjust the color of that overlay. So let's do this cyan color and let's do five and five for the number of rectangles within the overlay. And now you can see I have five up, five down, cyan colored crop overlay. All right, this next option we have here is the color tab. This is where we're gonna go to adjust and control the color within our images. Now this is another reason why I highly recommend Capture One. The color control capabilities in the software are incredibly powerful, but very precise as well. One of my favorite tools here is the color balance tool. If I drop this down, you can see I can select and adjust the shadow, mid-tone, and highlights color throughout my image. Let's go to this three-way adjustment slider and let's color do a simple color grade where we cool down the shadows, warm up the highlights. Pretty easy. Then I'm gonna reset that by selecting this reset button here at the top. That gets me back to my original image. Now next we have the exposure tab or this histogram icon here at the top. This is where we're gonna adjust exposure, brightness, contrast, clarity, select our white balance, all the options you see here on the left. Now one of the things we'll be going over in a future video is this levels and curves adjustment tools. These are amazing in Capture One. The ease of being able to put in and adjust your input and output on the levels is amazing. I also love the Luma curve here in the curve tool. It's one of my favorite features in Capture One. All right, next you have the details tab or this magnifying glass icon. Here we can add and adjust sharpening, noise reduction, we can add grain, we can control the spot removal tool, and you can adjust the moiré you may see in your image. Now the film grain tool is one of the best I've seen in any editing software. It's easy to control and has loads of options for applying the film grain. All right, the next tab is going to be the adjustment tab. It's going to be this clipboard with a check icon. This is where you select and apply your presets. So there are a few built-in presets with Capture One. Let's drop down built-in styles, go to spring, and select different presets that are built into Capture One. Now you notice as I selected different three different presets that they showed up here at the top of this panel. And the first preset I select was spring 01. Now it says overridden. Every time you stack a preset on top of another, it's going to be overridden by that last preset you selected. So if I select spring five, now spring seven is overridden. If I deselect three, you can see the adjustments that's happening. Those presets that were selected are now gone. Now I can also create custom presets, my own presets. We'll be going over that in a future video, so be sure to subscribe. All right, this last tool tab we have is the info or metadata tab. I know a lot of people don't find this interesting, but this is where you're gonna find all of your image metadata. 
and where you can add important IPTC data, like the city the image was shot in. This is also gonna be an important place where you can actually add a copyright to your images. Also in this tool tab, you can find the option to add keywords and search for keywords. Now, one of the things I mentioned last time about Capture One is its customizability. If I right click on this tool tab, you can see I can actually add or remove tools to each of these tabs and also add some currently not visible additional tabs. One of my favorite is the export tab. So if I right click here on the tool tabs bar and select add tool tab, I selected export. Now you can see the export tab here in the tool tabs. These are some of the export tools you have in Capture One. Up here at the top is one of my favorite features, export recipes or export presets. Right now I have selected JPEG 100.5 size. This is going to export this currently selected image as a JPEG 100 quality and half the size to wherever I have selected here in the export location. It's a pretty easy and quick way to export your images, especially when bulk exporting. Now another really cool feature is I can actually add different tools to different tool tabs. So if I select exposure, right click anywhere on the tools tab, add tool, I can actually add a film grain tool to my exposure tab now. If I go down to the bottom, you see film grain here. Now, one thing to keep in mind with these tool tabs is that there is a pinned area and a scrollable area down here at the bottom. It's indicated by the solid black line you see between the two areas. What that does, if I navigate down to film grain and select the three dots, I can move tool to pinned area. And now you see it's not part of this scrollable area it's going to be pinned here at the top. It's not going to move. I can shrink it down by selecting the arrow to the left of it, but it's now pinned to this top area. I can do that with any of these tools down in the scrollable area, like style brushes. Now I have different brushes, or the style brushes tool, in the pin area. And put it back into the scrollable area. So I can add different tools for each tab. I can even create a totally customized tool tab. If I right click here at the top again, I can select add tool tab, custom tool tab down here at the bottom. Let's call it analog and select the icon to be, I don't know, the sunrise. Hit select add tab. And now I can add different tools. So obviously film grain, add tool, let's do black and white when I wanna make black and white images. Um, the film green one, let's actually put that, move to a scrollable area. So that will be down here below. Let's add some other tools. Let's do the curve tool. Let's also add a vignette tool. And one more, let's do the levels adjustment tool. So now if I had a workflow or images that required the black and white adjustment tool, film grain curve, vignetting, and level tools, I have a custom tool tab that allows me to access these tools much more quickly than going from one tool tab to the other. I can just select analog and I've got the five tools I need. All right, so that's the tools tab and tools in Capture One. We'll go into more detail in future videos, so be sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.